morning, Sean. How are you? Did this work? I think so. I hear you okay. <laughs> I guess when well, all else okay. fails, you just call me. Yeah, tech yeah, trader having yeah. some tech problems. <laughs> I Who knows, man? It, it's, it's weird. I, I kept picking it up, and, and it would pick up, and it's like somebody was hanging us up or something. Who knows? Yeah, well, it's the man trying to hold you down. Yeah, I can't let him do that. Can't let him do that. And by the way, what a fantastic, beautiful day and week and month and year to be alive. I'll just say that. Yeah, I because, hope everybody feels the same way. Because all your stocks went up today? No, but a lot of them have worked. This has been a very, very good year. And and frankly, to think, you know, to think that everything's going to work all the time is loser trader mentality. You you. You know, you have to be able to withstand uh, pretty good hits, and I, yeah, I took a pretty good hit on Twitter. Now it's not; a, it's it's still a massive gain from from where I own it, but you know, I, I took a pretty good hit, and uh, suffice to say that just a few other names going up has has pretty much paid for it, uh, if, if if not even more. So, but but here's here's the, I don't know how much time you want to spend on this, but if there's if there's one thing I'm going to stress right now, you know, sometimes my ideas take a while to work. But, you know, I don't go for one or two or five-point moves on $500 stocks or $1,000 stocks or $200 stocks. I mean, I literally go for 35, 75, 150, 300% moves. So, so the magnitude of what I'm trying to do is completely different. You know, I mean, hey, if I'm putting 30 grand into something uh, and I catch a triple, I make $90,000, you know. So, so um and that, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to do that many, many, many times a year. Um, and that, that dollar amount is, you know, people can put whatever dollar amount they want in. Um, that's not, that's just a, a sample, right? Uh, it can be 2,500. It can be 10 grand. It can be 50 grand. Hey, for big rollers, it can be a million that they, that they turn into three or four million. The bottom line is when, when things turn and you get inflections, you can get really, really, really outsized moves in the age of algorithmic trading. And so I'm talking about the fiber optic sector now. So we had a good report from Neon Photonics. Uh, you know, what's that stock done? Um, you know, is it 50% in three days? Something like that. So so there's 50%. Um, Acacia had a very good report. I, I'm at, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Acacia was like 42 to 45 right now when we were talking. Uh, it's 37. It's it, frankly, I, I, I th don't really think they got much out of a of a huge guide. Uh, the the weirdest one is you have light down six percent a day on an uh, earnings report. I would basically just say is a crusher, like a flat out crusher. So um, I've kind of been waiting to see if briefing has any updates as like what what uh, th they say. Um, meaning, you know, what is the consensus opinion on why it, why it turned, why it went down? I think it was, went down on China News, but other people disagree with me on that. Anyway, I don't want to go on a big diatribe about this, but uh, typically when you get a fiber optic, optic cycle turns, which means you go, you go from sort of most of the companies missing, disappointing, analysts lowering numbers for a while, then you get a quarter, like I think we had one or two quarters ago, where only about half the companies missed. Um, and this is the first quarter I can think of where you have the majority of companies are beating numbers. And this, so, so I would call this like the first good quarter. It's not really even a good quarter yet. It's just a quarter where the, the, most of the companies are beating estimates. So eh, if, the, if this is like a normal cycle, uh, th this doesn't usually end in one or two quarters. It usually runs anywhere from four to eight quarters. Typical is probably five to six so I think I think we're kind of at Q1, good quarter Q1 of what could be a four to an eight quarter kind of move. And that doesn't mean the stocks are going to go straight up for the, that whole duration. They'll go up, they'll go down. Um, but uh, th this, I, I believe we're kind of at that key inflection point. And where, where are the analysts? The analysts are all doubting Thomas's, and most of them are afraid to upgrade names like Acacia. It'll, it'll take them a while and a higher stock price to upgrade. All right. Well, you already touched on L I T E. Yeah, that's a just weird. I I mean, I think the stock should be up like I don't know, ten twenty percent today on that report, and it's down six. So, uh, by the way, it just did, uh, I I could post this too, but I, I I bought some. I bought some at. In fact, I bought some about sixty cents higher than it is right now. 
Um, and my plan is that roughly every two to three bucks lower from 55, I'll just I'll just add more. So if you want to use round numbers, you know, 52, 53, I'll add another slug. 50, I'll add another slug. 47, 48, I'll add another slug. And, and so um, because my, I feel pretty confident now about, you know, I was a little edgy on my price target on this one just because this, this is one that's worked. It's gone up quite a bit. My price target was still like another, I don't know, 50% higher than where it is. And I don't know if they're going to deliver quarters like this. I, I might actually be... I don't know. I might be conservative, really, where, where I am. So I, I think they can trade to 80 to 90 pretty easily. You know, 80, 80, 80, 85 ish. And then I'll, I'll go from there. All right. So just in case you missed it, Tech T is adding to L I T E here. So you'd recommend. Yeah, you can get, you uh, put, get it cheaper put, than me. Like I say, I, I paid high 54, so you, you, you can beat me by 60 cents right now. So if somebody was just new to you or new to the story here, uh, you would advise entering a, uh, an initiating a small position at least, right? Yeah. Now, full disclosure, I've, I've been, you know, I was, I loved the stock at 22 bucks two years ago. So it's not nearly as good of a buy as it was at 22. At the same time, you know, I have quite, if you go back and read my light commentary, I have quite, I had a really, really great trade on this because I bought this pretty close to kind of what the year lows right now are, like, like low to mid 40s. Um, and I even said at the time, I thought this is probably the best time to buy light since I was buying it, you know, uh, literally 15, 20 points cheaper because this company is a much better company. Well, let, let me just, to reiterate kind of what I said back in, uh, what was that, February, March, the company is a way better company today than it was two years ago. So two years ago, you had to, you had to make a bet and a belief that 3D sensing would become a thing. You you know you also had to make a bet and a belief that there would be a China optical cycle, there would be a U.S. optical cycle. So you know this whole group was really really bombed out a couple of years ago. A um, lot of disbelief. You know this was this is also a piece of the old JDS Uniphase, maybe one of the most hated technology names of all time at this point. So, so arguably the best assets of JDS Uniphase got spun off into Lumentum, which is L-I-T-E. But it's, it's an easier, more comfortable story now than it was back then. I, again, it was a glaring long to me back then. But, you know, they have a lot of revenues. I mean, I think, I think they're sitting there. They've either doubled or tripled their revenues in like three years. So the, so the companies had done a lot of good things, had a lot of success. But they have huge growth opportunities. I mean, even just today, again, this is so weird. They were just talking about their automotive opportunity for 3D sensing, which, which by the way, would be, would be magnitudes higher from a TAM perspective. It would be magnitudes higher than, uh, than smartphones. And, and, you know, they're basically getting set up for a ramp in, like, late 18, early 2019 for that. And it's like nobody cares. Again, there, there was some China tariff news that I think hit around the open. You know, a lot of times these stocks will trade in the pre-market. They'll trade on the earnings report. They won't really trade on macro. But the minute the minute the market opens, a big macro story can have a much a much bigger effect. And I again, I really get. And but you know, th these stocks, this whole group of stocks, have sold off literally two hundred times on China stuff. So so. Uh, at some point, it just won't sell off on bad China news anymore. I, I, I'm sort of surprised it still does, actually. All right, let's parlay that into AAOI. This one's had a pretty significant uh, drawdown since it um, since it opened, uh, right at around the 46 area. Now it's trading below 41. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of think same thing. I mean, really, really good report. I, I didn't think their guide was that great, but the recorder was huge. Um, you know, I had exited this. I mean, that, I've just, uh, for, for newer listeners, I was short this, like, literally 90 bucks. Um, I said this was a peak earnings, great short opportunity, nailed the short. Then I flipped along, I don't know, close to 30. I mean, it might have been a little above. It might have been a little low. I'd, I'd have to go back and look. Um, but right, right around 30 is around the, around the time. Uh, went below, you know, I built position up. Uh, and I exited this. I, you know, kind of high 40s, I got out of it. And kind of lucky, L luckily before it kind of had that drop to 37, I was sort of thinking about buying some. I just, I just didn't because I've, I've got a ton of exposure in this whole group. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, same feeling. I, I, I don't really know. I don't know if it should have been up eight, by the way, though. That was the only thing. 
Uh, if I could go back and redo everything, I might have shorted this last night or pre-market when it was up. Like I think I saw it up like eight seventy, and I, I honestly I didn't I didn't think it should have been up, up eight seventy, but whatever. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'll buy this. I'd rather buy Light and Finisar and, and Acacia and things like that. But but I did like this name, so I, I went from short to long. Uh, and then, you know, once it went from sort of like high 20s to high 40s, I, you know, I feel like there's other things I can do. Um, but that was a good report, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if analysts like it. If it drops much more, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind buying this again between 35 and 40, somewhere in there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I had a friend ask, I, I was going to ask for a friend if you'd be interested. If you didn't already own any uh, exposure, um, if you're just getting in now, would this pullback be attractive to you, but uh, I think you can probably not that this one. name because I would say I would go with Finisar, Acacia, Light, uh, w one of those names. MTSI. In fact, MTSI still might be my favorite short-term name in the group. I think we have a conference today. Well, I won't be surprised. I mean, it, again, that's another one. I actually thought they should have been up around three, four points on the earnings report, and they were flat to down on it, and the stock had sold off into the report. Uh, but again, I, they, they had a good quarter. And I, again, this is very, very early in what could be a fairly good cycle for them. Um, you know, and again, this is again, the typical stuff. You know, everybody liked it. Every analyst liked the stock between 56 and 66. I didn't like the stock at all. Uh, I was not short this. I should have been. Uh, I shorted AOI, AOI instead. But, but you know, I, I mean, literally at 20 bucks, this thing's dumb. I mean, this thing, this stock could easily be trading between 30 and 40 right now well maybe not right now maybe a couple more good quarters so but the, you know that's another name um so yeah aoy you know if you would have asked me that question when i was buying the stock at 30 i would have said yeah i like it at 30 at, at 40 it, it, and i just don't i worry about their technology footprint and their technology platform long term relative to the competition that that was that was in fact that was my big bear case at the highs. It was like I called peak earnings on it, and I was right on that. I was also worried about them losing market share. I was right on that. Um, I was also worried that their leadership position would, would be nullified to a certain degree, and that's kind of happened. So, um, But now that th that's all happened, it's, it's, it's a better trade. It's a better buy. I, I would kind of need AOI lower because I favor other names. All right. Well, let's talk about another name that you were pounding the table on for quite some time. That's uh, Hortonworks, HDP. I like to say it's a good good day to be alive. Um, no, jo all jesting aside, um, I, you know, I would still, now this is one I could buy right here. Uh, I'm not because I don't need to. Um, but I would say Hortonworks and Cloudera, uh, and I, I, I might even put a special note out on Cloudera, uh, if I scan, as, as I do my work and I look at a fundamental matrix of, of companies, roughly 400 companies, and then I parse all these companies into their respective industry groups or their respective competitive areas. So, so I basically, my view now is there's very few software names I like to be long in, but the ones I want to be long in, I think, have exceptional opportunity versus shorts in things like Adobe and Intuit and uh, what I call the top 10 of the, the IGV, which is the ETF of, of cloud software stocks. So as, as much as I think Adobe's overvalued, as just one example, I think, I think Hortonworks and Cloudera are equally undervalued. And I could see, I mean, this is one of those things. I mean, I could see I, uh, Cloudera 25 to 30 wouldn't surprise me. A Hortonworks doubling from here would. By the way, I loved Hortonworks at 7. And it tripled from seven. It was the, the one of the most ridiculous undervaluation things in software, honestly, that I've seen in years was Hortonworks at seven bucks, by the way. But anyway, it's it's, it's roughly double, triple from there. It's still almost as cheap because what Hortonworks keeps doing is having forty to forty five to fifty percent revenue growth on a stock price that really hasn't moved that much. So so every year that they grow revenue is forty five percent and the stock price doesn't really move that much it makes the stock 40% cheaper, right, on a relative basis. So uh, Hortonworks, Cloudera, exceptional opportunities, I think, in this cloud software space, in a space, by the way, where I think there's far more shorts than longs. All right. Uh, another name that seems to pop up on the feedback list is FireEye, and this one's uh, really still struggling around that $15 area. 
am. I, I may be ultimately wrong on this. I don't know. I, I still I still like it. I'm still long. I've not added to it, though. I mean, the one thing I've been pretty firm on is that uh, I've, I've been working other names, adding other names. I like other things. It's just, it's not, um, you know, you, you I'm, I don't respect, like, I'm not a big believer in technical price action as the ultimate arbiter of why stocks move. So, uh, in fact, I think it's probably like if I had a list of eight factors, it's probably like the sixth most important thing on my list. However, when a stock just doesn't work, you you know, to keep piling money into it uh, when there's plenty of other opportunities doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's It would be equivalent to beating your head against the wall and expecting to break the wall down with your head. That, that wouldn't be very smart. So... Um, I still like FireEye. I still think it's very undervalued. Uh, I'm holding what I have. Um, I think there's a potential big catch-up play. Uh, the stock could double and still trade at a huge discount to pretty much all of its cybersecurity peers. At the same time, I've always said my favorite stock in the group was CyberArk. So uh, I, I favored CyberArk over FireEye pretty much the whole time I've been on briefing. Um, that one has worked. Um, I've favored other names when they were cheap. I like Palo Alto Networks when it was cheaper. Uh, that stock's worked. I don't know. Fire is just one. I, I hope what happens, or I hope what doesn't happen, is that the company finally just just gives up and sells out for a cheap M&A price. Because I do feel like if they can tough it out for a couple more quarters and keep doing the deliverables that they're doing... I really do think the stock could be re-rated quite a bit higher. But that's really the issue. It's, it's, it's almost like the sentiment is completely taking over. I mean, it's, it's, it, hey, we could talk about Tesla. It's, it's almost like FireEye is the antithesis of Tesla. Like, there, there's plenty of reasons to not believe the Tesla story and to think the company should, should go much lower and the stock's kind of crazy here. But guess what? There's a cult of personality w which drives Tesla. Uh, likewise, there's there's a, a sentiment trade that's very pervasive that keeps FireEye down. So, you know, until that changes, I don't I don't really know. Um, but I'm willing to wait for it to change. And if a year or two from now, if it's still at 15 bucks, I probably will eventually sell it for a tax loss against plenty of other winners. But but I, I don't really have a reason to sell it. Uh, I, I honestly would like to buy it, but it's just not doing anything. So I'm I'm having much more success trading other names. Um, you know, there may come a time that, you know, I mean, really, if, I think what I'm kind of doing on this name is kind of waiting for a buy stop. Like, if I, if I think if it kind of got back through, uh, let me just look at the chart real quick. Uh, you know, if, if, if it got back above 1625, 1650, 1675, um, and kind of had a little bit of a head of steam, it might be an easier buy at that. And I wouldn't be giving up a whole lot of, I would have missed a whole lot uh, waiting for that move. So that's probably kind of how my view. But I, I really like it. I think it's very undervalued. I think it's very maligned. Um, it's kind of like Hortonworks. I mean, I I I, sl I, I, I was like, uh, I'm trying to think of a Greek a Greek uh, story about somebody who had a who had a pull something or a, a Herculean task uh, is is not quite what I was thinking. But you know, Hercules had all these tasks he had to do. You know, lugging Hortonworks around for as long as I did before it paid off, and it paid off big. Um, what was was a task, and the fire eye lugging is 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 more <laughs> is more arduous than the than the Hortonworks lugging. So uh, put it this way, I feel for anybody who's been bullish on fire eye because it has been frustrating. All right, so CyberArk though is kind of a different story here. C Y B R. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's finally kind of done. So I've always kind of compared CyberArk to Splunk. And it, it kind of had a leg move, but I always, I always thought Splunk was uh, was just sort of waiting for a big burst, and, and it finally did. My time here at briefing, you know, Splunk has had a huge upside move, uh, basically doubled from from you know uh, last fall prices, um, and Splunk just kept delivering, delivering, delivering. And it was kind of uh, underappreciated, and it finally it finally was let loose. Um, and CyberArk has basically kind of traded the same. Uh, they had a lot of good results. The stock arguably should have probably not traded as low as it did, but for whatever reason it did. Um, and, and the funny thing is, I always talk about this, you know, it's, the stock now is basically moving really well on quarters that were just as good as, I, I, I remember quarters where they reported reports I thought were just as good, and the stock would go down 10%. So there you go. There's your sentiment. There's your 
algorithmic push pull. Um, but yeah, I, by, by the way, I have trimmed, I've trimmed Cyberrock and I think I, I think I posted that a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm writing what, what I have. I, I almost bought some. I was very close to buying some around 60, 62 ish. Um, yeah, I could have, but you know, I'm not going to complain about the results on this name. It's been a pretty good name for me. Uh, I do think it could trade higher. This is one I might have to update. In fact, I got a focus list update either coming on Friday or Monday. Uh, I might raise the price target on this. It's, it's getting actually pretty close to what, uh, when it was 42, I basically had a price target of 75 on it. Well, it's only five points away. I still like the stock. I still think the stock has upside. So I kind of need to recalibrate my numbers on it. Um, but I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold what I have for, um, you know, I don't know, the foreseeable future. Uh, it would take a pretty big drop for me to, buy, to get in because like at this point I favor Hortonworks and Cloudera. And, and some other names over over on fresh money. But there's nothing wrong with holding a winner and letting it go, and I think this could go higher. What about Carbon Black? That's one that you've been involved in. Yeah, CBLK. in fact, I'd, I'd rather buy Carbon Black. Um, this is this is a little bit, I mean, I kind of like the quarter. Um, I, I, that's actually a bad way to phrase that. I like the quarter just fine. Uh, I don't really see any metrics they didn't beat on. All the top line headline numbers were good. I'm more focused on revenue production and revenue guidance. I actually, you know, the, these guys are pretty good now at, at knowing how to guide and still keep the guide conservative. So they got, the, the guidance was higher. Um, I, I like the quarter. It, it, you know, there's always a name. So, so they, they seem to kind of like Zscaler and ZUO and, oh, there's another one I'm forgetting. Carbon Black hasn't quite got the love. Of, of some of these newer IPOs that all came out roughly at the same time. Um, but yeah, I like the name. Um, it was trading really nicely in the after hours. So, you know, who, who knows? Who, who knows? I don't, I don't overly worry about, you know, why stocks move the way they move after hours. In fact, I think people put way too much concern on stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, 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 I, probably another another dollar lower. I'm, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna double up my position. I don't have a I don't have a big position. But I'd probably another buck from here. I, I'd be pretty comfortable adding to it. All right, that would imply around twenty two for those listening at home. All right, yeah, twenty two, twenty two fifty, something like that. Okay. So we've got a big bulk of the earnings out of the way. How about a scorecard, a report card, if you will? Well, I mean, I I think I I would say the scorecard is almost identical to kind of what we said it was going to be. That uh, it's still going to be another good another quarter of a lot of good reports. The question is, what you know, how do things react? And we did see some down, pretty pretty heavy downside action even on good reports early in the quarter. And I think I think a few calls ago we said, or I said that. What you'll have is you, if you get enough stock sell off enough on good reports, we'll eventually hit a point during the quarter where good reports will start being rewarded. And that's, that's almost exactly what happened. I'm trying to think of the report. It was basically the Apple report that kind of turned things. Like the Apple report got rewarded on a good quarter. By the way, Apple reported very well. I, I, got, I got to give Apple credit. Um, I still don't have any interest in being long the name, but they reported much, especially their guidance, which was much better than, than I thought it was going to be, which, by the way, was, was a clue to the 3D sensing stocks being good, which they've all been great. Uh, they've reported really well. So, so I think here's what's happening now. This is a, a kind of a turnaround on your report card, but I think now we've had so many reports go up on good reports that we've kind of hit a phase now that now it's going to get harder to go up on good reports. But yeah, I mean, I, I think scorecard for general S&P 500 plus companies reporting has, been, again, very good quarter. Um, global, global growth is good. There's a lot of positive catalysts. It's why, it's, it's why shorts, I think, have a hard time working. I think there's, there's maybe more underlying strength in the economy and in a lot of subsets of various industry groups that then people really believe in right now. Um, and we could talk about the whole reasoning behind the disbelief uh, on, on another call, but I think that, you know, we're relatively early innings of, of a, this global GDP uh, juggernaut. US, U.S. growth has been pretty good, but the rest of the globe has really been suffering. And I, you know, it's really only been recent quarters that global GDP has really made a hard turn higher. Um, 
at the same time, we're wrestling with really, really high valuations on a couple, I, I even say a couple, but we have a few pockets of bubbles. Um, so, so the headwinds that we seem to run into, just we run into them because as good a report as the company produces, let's say a Facebook or a Netflix, the stock is so high that if the report's not perfect, it's going to sell off. But see that, but we're in the part of the earnings season though that I like. like Carbon Black does well. I didn't think it needed a perfect report. That stock did bounce a lot off the of lows, but you know, uh, CyberArk, Carbon Black, you know, Horton Works, Cloudera is still yet to report. Um, you know, we, we got to a point where companies didn't need perfect reports to go up. So yeah, there's plenty of stocks out there that are still cheap. But yeah, earnings. I think I'd give the report card at least a hell. It's another A. I mean, you you know. Companies are reporting really well. Um, I, think, I think the only thing you got to watch for, again, is sentiment, froth, massive overvaluation of certain key names, you know, things like that. And, and you know, that's been with us, though, since the start of the year. Um, and that's why maybe that's why we've been in the trading range pretty much this whole year. And we've talked about that a number of times, that the market has a hard time making big new highs, and then it corrects. But it also it also doesn't really correct that much. I think we've, we've maybe kind of sniffed uh, what six, seven, eight percent corrections a couple times, and that's been about the biggest downside we've had. Yeah, before we talk about the the Nasdaq in general and where your sentiment indicators are, uh, you mentioned some pockets of bubbles. Are you referring to the fangs, or is there another area that you're? Well, at? yeah, it's it's. I mean, uh, Tesla's probably one. Um, so, so you have Tesla slash cult stocks. There's a few of those. You've got Fang and you've got uh, cloud software. I mean, beyond that, you, you have hundreds of stocks that are actually exceedingly cheap. Uh, you know, things like Hortonworks and Cloudera and the Fiber Optic Group and Qualcomm. And, you know, I mean, for every, for every stock that's in what I would say kind of um, a one-third or a one-quarter or one-fifth of the 99 bubble, because, by the way, we're not anywhere near 99-type bubble-type stuff. Um, but, yeah, for, for every kind of Facebook, you, you probably actually have three or four names that are that are equally cheap. They just never get talked about. But they get rated a lot. They, you know, um, the computers know them, and the computers beat up on them all the time. But, but the, you know, they don't get much mention. They don't get much institutional support. Um, you know, we, we, we're, we're just in a weird market. Weird market being, a, I, I don't think we've ever had a market where so much institutional slash index slash closet index money goes into so few stocks. And, you know, we just have to be mindful of that and be careful of that. And, and, but, it, but it's really good, I think, for what I do because it, it actually increases your opportunity set away from, I don't know how many stocks, 15, 20, 30, 40 names that have elevated the indices. Um, so you, you have a very small number of names that are probably pretty notably overvalued to almost mini bubble overvalued, and then you have hundreds of companies that are exceedingly cheap because they just get they get rated lower for no reason over and over and over again until something good happens to them, and then they have this huge lift off. I, I think I use the term you know you got you get a bubble that's held under water, and when it finally releases, it, it moves to the surface very quickly. Uh, a name that kind of had a move like that recently is like a SWIR, S W I R. Uh, see, that's Sierra Wireless. Again, Acacia might move like that now. We saw Nutanix move like that. We saw Mule move like that. We, well, Mule got bought out. Uh, we saw Twilio move like that when, when the stock was a 23 to a $25 stock. It went to 50 very quickly. Um, you know, we're seeing ne Neon Photonics move like that. Um, Nutanix, NTNX was a name. It was one of my favorite names earlier this year, I believe, or late last year. You know, that stock's tripled off of lows. So the bottom line is, you know, and I could rattle off 50 other names. I mean, so w when these things release higher, they really go. Um, and I think that speaks to just the condition of the market. You, like I say, you have so many names that get really, really beaten up and trade at ridiculously low relative valuations to the very small number of names that have driven the market. Yeah, but you only gave me uh, the fangs and Tesla as some of those pockets of bubbles that are uh, on the upside. Well, I said, I said cloud software, too, which is a pretty big contingent. But, you know, you take IGV, look at that whole that whole index or that whole ETF or mutual. I think it's an ETF. 
Uh, I'm short that. You take that. You look at that top ten list. There's only one of those top ten names that I wouldn't be short. Uh, and then you probably look at the next ten to twenty names. It's the same. And there's probably only one in each ten of those names that I, I wouldn't think is a good short. So, but aside from that, I you know, I mean, energy is not expensive. Finance stocks are not expensive. I don't, I don't, I don't delve as deeply into healthcare except certain areas of biotech. All the biotech stuff I looked at has been, has been wrecked. It's been ter- It's been beaten to beaten to live in heck. Um, e- even a cell gene, which has popped, I, you know, that was a stock. I was. I said I probably ain't going to buy it, but for people who like mega cap names, I thought it was like one of the cheapest mega cap names. Pre- period. You know, they've had a decent little pop, but it's still very cheap. It's still a good buy at ninety. It was a great buy at eighty, um, but that's only ten points. It's not a big move on a stock that could go up. You know, fifty to seventy to eighty percent. So. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't know where, where another bubble would be, in fact, outside of the few things we've named. It's, you know, one could argue Bitcoin uh, was a bubble, but again, that, that bubble kind of already popped. You know, the, the bubble was the 15 to 20K range, and we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, we'll see, does, does it really keep going down? Or does it kind of trade like gold traded for years, where gold was elevated by a lot of ETF activity? Mm-hmm. So you would have new ETFs coming out. They'd be gold, gold type ETFs. Those gold ETFs would soak up supply. Um, so what would happen is you, you gold kind of artificially traded higher until that bubble popped. When, when, when was that? 11, 12, I think. Because once the ETF the ETF kind of got fully loaded and they soaked up all the gold inventory that they needed to buy to load their ETFs, there really wasn't any true demand. So the question is going to be for Bitcoin is, do you have enough uh, enough approvals, I guess, for ETFs to drive demand? And the, you have, an, hey, Damon's the expert on on Bitcoin. I, I've kind of been, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on the opposite side of that tree, even though I've never put any money into it. So he's the one and putting putting real money into it i just think it's uh i don't know i don't know if there's any real value um to that we'll see over time uh, i do like blockchain and you know uh, overstock.com has a lot of blockchain technology uh and that was a name that worked very well for me so uh, but yeah i don't know if there's you know i so i would disagree with people saying that hey the market's in a big bubble or st- tech stocks are in a big bubble I think when people say tech stocks are in a big bubble, they're probably only talking about four to eight names. I don't, you know, because I don't really think they're talking about hundreds of names. They're, they're probably just talking about the names that are talked about all the time, which is a small number. All right. So now let's dive into where you are on the NASDAQ because we've almost pulled back since uh, you were leaning somewhat bearish. We had a couple... Uh, a couple of hundred point decline and we've reverted back to right around that same place where you thought we would see some weakness i imagine the sentiment indicators might be getting they're a little, getting elevated again getting a little yep. hot yeah they're, they're getting a little they're, they're not hot they're not as hot as they were but they're getting a little ele- i i kind of think we're in the same place we were when i said hey i think we're right here i think we're gonna have a sell-off by the way nasdaq saved what could have been a much deeper correct i mean uh apple Apple saved the Nasdaq sell-off. Mm-hmm. We were we literally had just done 300 points of Nasdaq downside, and it looked like it was going to accelerate. And oh, by the way, Apple reported not just a good quarter, really good quarter, um, because the guidance was really good. And you know, it, it's sort of amazing, by the way, the durability of their report because I w- I was expecting this could be a bad report in front of a turnaround quarter for them. Um, because you know we're 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 now a few weeks away, but you know they're only going to have I think a, a one week of new Apple iPhones in the next quarter. Um, I guess they expect it's going to be a whopper of a week. Um, but the bottom line is, I thought we we're going to have this could be a quarter where Apple might not report well, and then take a quarter, and then Apple starts chugging again. Um, but Apple literally saved the NASDAQ. I think it did. So the save is, is, is it could be somewhat short-lived. Um, the action today is, could be a bit of a precursor because you really are seeing a lot of pretty good reports and some good news that is either being ignored or outright sold off. I mean, you know, when I see a mid-cap stock like Light, 
have a report like it did. And again, I, I feel very confident Light's going to go up and, and fulfill much higher to the upside. But when, when they beat, the, when they rate it to the degree they've rated it, it means, it, I, I really don't think they can do that unless they're just very, very limited buyers right now. So I think we're kind of, and that was the condition right before that. What would we have either a 300, 400 point NASDAQ sell off over like a three day period? Um, that was kind of the condition then. It's just there, there was very little money wanting to buy stocks at that point. Um, and I don't know, it, you know, unless there's something else going on on with light, I just think this is a liquidity rate. And so I, I think liquidity is starting to dry up again. And when, liqu when liquidity dries up, stocks can drop very, very rapidly. All right, two more things, and these are listener questions. I want to first get a pre-earnings take on Sina, S-Y-N-A. Um, I, I don't think I'd buy it. Uh, I've bought it already. I have it. Uh, it's, you know, th this was one of those funny things. I, th I think you could say it should have traded to 55 already just on news that they've had, but they kind of got there on this artificial dialogue semi-deal. Um, you know, I really wish it was still 45, 46-ish. I think I posted a buy, by the way, on on, on that. Um, I think I bought into that, into that dip. I'm pretty sure I posted that. Um, so I don't know. I, I like I say, I, I, I think it's going to be a good quarter. So, so the only thing I worry about is is any going to is, is any is anybody going to be around to buy a good quarter uh, if Sina posts one because because they've bought a bunch of good quarters now for the last number of trading days. So you know that that's my only short term concern. Um, I, I think Sina is very similar to my call on the fiber optic stocks that they've been counter cyclical. They've been having some struggles while other parts of tech have been doing well. I think now we're at the phase where we could, and they, by the way, they can have a pretty long cycle. When they when they get cooking, um, they can have quite a few quarters in a row which produce really good results. And I, I think they're really, really close to uh, stringing off a number of quarters in a row. I also like the M&A they've done. Um, so we'll see. I, I think either this quarter or next quarter should be uh, the, the quarter where a lot of people finally go, wow, sign is really starting to starting to cook again. So if, if not this quarter, I think it will be next quarter. All right. And then the last one is regarding Twitter. This one down, trading uh, 32 area. I think Twitter, I mean, this is what I'm personally doing. As I'm making trading gains, I'm just buying more Twitter. Uh, I feel very comfortable buying it here. Again, I, I could make an argument that stock should have held or gone up on the report. I thought it was a very good report. You know, there was a time that had, there was a time not that long ago that had Twitter said we removed 60 million bad accounts, the stock probably would have gone up 20% on that news. But, but you know, the stock tripled off of lows, so, so now the narrative is a little different. Um, but no, it, it's still, it's, it's back to being one of my favorite longs. I, as you remember, I was kind of pulling in my horns. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't buying any. I was trimming, trimming some Twitter. In fact, I posted multiple posts in in early to mid June, that I was trimming Twitter position. Um, so, so the bottom line is, uh, you know, th this is a big pullback. I mean, I think it's pulled back thirty percent. Uh, their quarter, by the way, was far far better than Facebook's quarter, and Facebook didn't drop thirty percent. But again, see, this is that liquidity push pull algorithmic. You know, where's the money flowing into the index trade stuff? And, and Facebook benefits from from you know, being put into the closet index folks all day after day after day. Um, but yeah, no, the Twitter report was far, far better than the Facebook quarter. So I, I actually think Twitter moves higher. Um, you know, that now, I think we said this one time, uh, a number of calls ago around the time they reported, I said, you know, it wasn't just six to nine months ago that analysts had modeled this quarter, the quarter they just reported, to being a flat to negative revenue growth quarter. And oh, by the way, what Twitter just do? 23% growth over prior year. So that, to, honestly, that sometimes you just got to look at the facts and that's a glaring fact. So nine months ago, again, analysts had modeled this quarter to be flat to down 5%. Twitter just did 23%. So you, you can make your own conclusion from that. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to highlight today that maybe we didn't cover? Um... Yeah, I mean, we talked about a lot already. I mean, here's an interesting name. 
I, I don't know how the exact, I, I, ICHR, is it Icor Holdings? It's a semi-camp company. Now, so this is something I always highlight and pay attention to. They had a good report, but a bad guide. Look at the stock. Stock, in fact, stock was kind of flat earlier. Uh, now it's up, oh, what is 8% that? 8% now. Almost 8%. That's a. This is a very cheap, uh, you know, same thing. So, so you know how I like HDP and Cloudera? I could probably sprinkle one or two other, but but I like HDP and Cloudera long against overvalued cloud software shorts. This would be another one. There's I, I there's not many semi cap equipment companies I would like. LRCX don't like it. Clack don't like it. Click don't like it. Blah blah blah. I like this one. I mean, this this is a very very cheap name in a in a, in a space of crowded stocks, and this semiconductor cycle is kind of interesting because. It's, it's almost like they got through the period that was supposed to be tough for them, meaning they being the semiconductor and the semiconductor equipment companies. So the tough period was supposed to be the period where you have slow handset and iPhone sales for six or six or seven months. Well, they were slow, but it didn't seem to really hit the micron, the DRAM cycle, you know, the memory cycle, all that stuff, uh, solid state cycle. So guess what's going to happen? We're going to have a whole bunch of new handsets. We're going to have new iPhones coming out. Um, we got more needs for more computing power and cars and Internet of Things and all sorts of stuff. So it's entirely possible that this, it, it could be kind of like the, mid in, the mid-90s as we moved into late 90s for this group that the, the, there were one or two cycles that should have been kind of bigger down cycles that weren't that bad. And then the next cycle was really good. And so then the whole group got re-rated. Because the, these stocks trade perennially really cheap anyway. Um, but I don't know. That's an interesting name. And any time you see a stock that where a company guides lower, and I think a couple analysts lowered price targets and the stock trades up, I'd pay attention to that. So, so this is on my radar. I call this my long. Uh, this is on long radar now. Um, and I like the name. So um, an another one would be AMBA. I, I think AMBA is very close. Um, you know, that's one of the semiconductor companies I talk about. One of the few companies I said this would be a long against most, most of the group I don't like. I think we're getting pretty close to where this, this could have a, a pretty good move to. Uh, and then I'd highlight Qualcomm. You know, Qualcomm's my, my favorite mega to large cap tech stock. In fact, it's my favorite large cap stock, period. And Qualcomm's holding pretty good. You know, they had a good report. You know, that's one that did go up on a good report. Uh, they've extended off that good report, but still an exceedingly cheap stock. Um, and, you know, one I plan to be in for another, you know, 30, 40, 50 points upside. All right. Well, all that sounds good. Got a couple names, uh, a couple of new names. I guess not new. ICHR is probably the newest uh, that you're throwing on the radar. Well, and sort of new for me. Uh, Briefing has had some very good coverage of this name. Uh -huh. So there's, there's a, if anybody wants to research this name, just throw it in the search box. There's plenty of information on it. All right. So you got a focus list coming out. Uh, what you said on uh, Friday or Monday? It'll either be Friday or Monday. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna update it. Um, and I don't know if I, you know, I, ha I think I had five changes on it last time, which five out of twenty names is a lot. Uh, I don't know if I have any really new names, but I but I I, I might be adjusting some number. I mean, the Horton work specifically. Um, you know, they've had a number of beats in a row. I got to see where analysts come in and how much they raise numbers. But I think I think that you we can see a pretty pretty large out year revenue adjustments on that, which, which would which would increase the value of that. Um, in light too, I I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I I haven't seen any light commentary. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some pretty positive analyst commentary on light. So again, even though the stock's not acting great right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the analyst, uh, because th this is if there is a favorite name in the fiber optic group, and again, I think more names will spread and become favorites again. But th it's the kind of the only name the analysts like, right? Well, they like two six too, I I V I. Um, but aside from those two names, the analysts kind of dis have disdain for the group. Um, but but I, I think light will likely lead uh, the group higher, and I think the analysts will will come out with some real positive commentary on that, and you know, in coming days. All right. Well, how about we do this? Why don't we 
pause for the, for the moment and uh, we'll let you get caught up on all that. We'll reconvene in 20, or I'm sorry, 48 hours. We'll reconvene in 48 hours because I'm sure you'll have uh, a pretty good handle on what that focus list is going to look like and we can talk about that and maybe we'll even have a segment on Friday where we'll do some rapid fire chart, uh, rapid fire chart analysis. Maybe we'll have some listeners uh, ask you some questions uh, ahead of time about what stocks they have on their radar and what you think about it, especially after we're coming out of this earnings season. Uh, does that sound like a good plan to you? Yeah. In fact, so the only name that, that we will probably end up talking about, again, I don't know if it's going to be a big mover, but the, the probably a name that I have uh, high interest in is, is Redfin, and they report uh, Thursday. Oh, well, that'll be good because uh, I'm sure yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the listeners – are invested in that one as well because that has been one of your names that you've highlighted quite a few times over the last uh, you know couple of months anyway and I'm sure that you have a lot of followers in that name so get a recap on that uh, are you doing anything ahead of that I might buy more because it's had a pullback off of Zillow uh -huh. so uh, in, in fact you know my recommended trade is long red fin short Zillow um, so Zillow got cracked hard on the earnings report. Z Zillow and Redfin don't really have much to do with each other. So selling selling off Redfin on a bad report off Zillow actually doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, I, I may increase it. You know, I don't generally do that because I already got have positions. I always, in fact, I always say that the best time to do trades is anywhere three, four, five days in front of it. If you're going to do something relatively close to a report, that's the best time to do them. Um, but you know, hey, we all have to have be able to be nimble and adjust. I don't know. I, I kind of like it here in the low twenty twos. Um, and you know, if they get rated hard on the report, I'll just buy more cheaper anyway. So, so it's it's an easier trade for me because I'm not so dependent. You know, if the stock is weak on on a quarter, uh, that's probably not going to affect my thesis much, if at all. So, um, so the the only the only thing I don't like is if if, if they don't have a good quarter, uh, and I could buy it at nineteen post report then I'll kind of lament the fact that I added to it. Um, but, you know, we, you know, earnings, whether they should or not, they just move stocks a lot. So, uh, and, you know, I'm not afraid to, to hold or increase positions into a report, especially if I like the valuation on something. And this is one I like. I think it's pretty cheap relative to, uh, uh, pretty much relative to anybody growing as fast as they are. And just for the sake of the listeners, I know you've highlighted it before, but remind us why Redfin and Zillow, why it doesn't make sense to really pair them. I know they're, they're similar Well, they're peers. completely different business models. I mean, they're, the, the only real similarity is they just happen to operate in the same industry, which is real estate. Mm -hmm. But they don't, there's nothing they really do that, I mean, Z, uh, Redfin has the, one of the most massive TAMs that I can find. They basically are lowering the cost of real estate transactions. Just like if you think about E-Trade and Ameritrade and all the discount brokers, what did they do to traditional brokerage business? Undercut they changed the it permanently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they completely disintermedi disintermediated the industry. They, they changed the pricing structure of the whole industry. That's, that's basically what Redfin is going to do. Zillow, Zillow is an advertising company. Well, and now, so now they are a home flipper. And now they might be a mortgage lender. So, uh, and, and I don't dislike Zillow. I, there have been times I've actually been long the stock. In fact, a, a while ago, I, I used to use Zillow, you know, as a, as a comparison for Twitter. I always said if Twitter just gets, quits missing numbers, they'll basically double or triple. Why? Because that's all, all Yelp and Zillow had to do to triple was quit missing numbers. And both stocks tripled off of prior lows. And, again, that's kind of all that Twitter needed to do. Twitter quit missing numbers and the stock tripled. So, but other than a comparison, I, I, you know, I liked Zillow when it was really cheap. The, the concern I have, and I can see the recent sell-off in the name, the more areas that they try to get into that are away from their core discipline could become a problem. It, it also could be a, sing, a signal that there, there isn't much juice left in the tank in their core business anymore. So, uh, you know, the fact, I, I, I don't really like the idea that they're going to be a house flipper. Um, I actually think mortgage lending is, is a better fit to the business to, for them. Um, and I've, I've long liked it when technology companies get into areas of finance, or especially transactional finance, 
I mean, I, I think Apple should have bought a bank and became a bank holding company a long, long time ago, by the way. Um, but they haven't. But, but you know, Apple Pay has done very well for them, right? It's been a really, really sticky feature in, in, their, in their feature set. So I think Zillow trying to compete in the mortgage lending business makes sense. The house flipping, I'm not so sure. That's an asset-heavy business in a company that runs a very asset-light business with high margins. So... Um, you know, we'll see what happens. Redfin is, is just a technology play to disintermediate pricing in the real estate industry. And that's a beautiful. Uh, the, the only risk to Redfin that I see long term is if somebody comes in and just does it uh, better than them. But I, I don't I don't I don't see that happening right now, um, if ever. So so the one thing we've seen in technology recently with the unicorn specifically is a lot of people always say, well, wait, just wait till competition comes in. But you know what? Competition never really comes in. So um, in it, it, Redfin's built a pretty big machine at this point. It would be pretty hard, put this way, it'd be very hard to replicate Redfin for the same cost that they, they spent replicating it. So somebody could replicate a Redfin, but it would probably cost them three times the, the, uh, the money that Redfin had to spend to build what they have. All right. yeah, that's the first mover advantage um, deal. All right. Every time I say we're going to wrap things up with you, we always get a last-minute listener question. So I'm going to do this last one. Well, hey, you know. I, I know. I, I, I give them what they want. You know, yeah, I, I, that, I, same here. I we're we're no, here to I serve. No, that's right. So I've got one more, and that's INFN. And the listener citing pretty decent quarter and guide yet dot, 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 dot. I don't think they did have a good guide. I think the quarter was good. I'd have to go back and look. I think when I saw it, I don't think the guide was good. I think they missed on guidance. Um, and I think that's why the stock... Now, that, that's one where I can see there, there is a fund. Now, but same thing. This is a, see, see how it spiked this morning? It, it, it was spiking right out of the gate. Um, by the way, this doesn't have China exposure. So if the China tariff thing is the, is the re I still think the China tariff headline is why, why all this stuff sold off, uh, stuff being fiber optics names. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't think they really had a good guide. I'd have to go back and look. I have not listened to that call yet. I've listened to some calls in the other, the, the Acacia call was fabulous, by the way. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. I have to listen to their call. I, you know, I like this name, but I think I, I, I formally took it out of the focus list because one, I had, I had enough fiber optic exposure anyway, and I basically replaced it with uh, MTSI. Uh, I favor MTSI. I, I'm, you know, I, I, I could buy Infinera again now. I, I think they're in a very good competitive position in the space because they're the closest thing to Acacia. What, what these guys do is they deliver very cutting-edge, high-speed um, throughput solutions. So they're, they're on the bleeding edge of the, of the highest-speed networks, and they're helping the companies that are building those highest-speed highest networks. Um, they basically are using you know, their, either their technology or Acacia's technology. Both companies have a lead in that. Um, the, the problem is the market for that isn't as big as the market for what I would call kind of the boilerplate 40, 100G type component type stuff that Light and Finisar and Aclaro and, and Neon Photonics and all those guys sell. Now, they would argue and they say, hey, we have very good solutions in the ultra high speed stuff too. They do, but they're not the leaders. Infinair and Acacia are the leaders there. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, uh, I, I think this company is worth more. I actually think there's a high probability this Infinair gets bought out. Now, it's interesting, they just bought another company, uh, and this is a call I'm going to listen to because I want to hear what they say about the company that they're buying, uh, which I believe is called Corient. Um, but, you know, again, this another, another name that just has a hard time really lifting. By, by the way, they've had great quarters where the stock has gone to 12 and then sold off. So uh, the, these stocks, you just have to... Uh, at least what I do, how I play them, I don't overly concern myself with the amount of time it takes to make a lot of money. Um, now, if it takes five years to make 20%, that's a problem. But if it takes 18 months to two years to make two or 300%, that's not a problem at all. All right. Well, let's leave it there for now. And we can pick back up on Friday where we'll do a, a little deeper dive into your focus list, see what's changed, and maybe just an opinion's changed, uh, if nothing else. And then we'll run through some uh, some charts like we did uh, 
uh, a few Fridays ago where where you had some uh, good ideas and some. I was going to say I, I think we should spend a good twenty thirty minutes on charts. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah, I, I think, think that's fun. I think Friday might be a good day to do it, considering it's August and there's really uh, not not a whole lot of catalyst in the cards as far as stocks. Uh, specific moves uh, with earnings season out of the way, uh, and that might be a good day to do that. I agree. All right. Well, hey, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for enlightening us on some of these names, and uh, hey, go Sina, right? That's right. That's right. Sina, Redfin, but you know, hey, as long as the companies do what they're relatively supposed to do, um, you know, I, I don't I don't sweat you know I don't sweat the current quarter as as much as most people I and and I, I I try to kind of repeat that message just because you know making a judgment based on that how a stock's trading for two hours you know in the life cycle of a stock probably is not the best way to make lots of money. All right. Well, as always, good stuff, and we shall talk Friday. All right. See you then. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean.